why we believe that the base rate of interest should be maintained at 0.5%. We will begin with an analysis of the UK economy and then look at why we believe that inflation will come down over, over the next two years. We will then address why we should not increase the base rate of interest and why we should not lower the base rate of interest. On my left is Jeremy Thundo. On next to him is Mr. Phillips, and on the far left is Kingsley Walker, and I am Thomas Redman. Thank you. The status of and forecast for the macro economy lead us inexorably to our decision. As shown, the projected level of UK GDP seems volatile and uncertain in the coming months, with the possibility for a recession over the next two quarters being much publicised recently. In the longer term, more sustainable levels of growth of 3% seem possible with correct policy decisions now. The situation we find ourselves in is one cloud of real uncertainty and with future growth looking fragile. Arguably, the most important factor of all in the rate decision is the uncertainty caused by the events within the euro area. Among many pertinent issues, the question of the future of the euro, the market uncertainty this has brought and, when, and will continue to bring, are the most important. These developments have been difficult to quantify and assess, and change rapidly with the Euro leadership decisions, yet they will undoubtedly be highly significant to the UK. This, combined with concurrent rising unemployment and falling real incomes, has made business and consumer confidence fr very fragile. Asset prices have been erratic, and UK bond yields have fallen, adding to the concern. Hints of export increases also have been dampened by the problems of the Eurozone, with whom a large portion of our trade occurs. With the current unpredictability, the, possi the possibility of very low levels of only 0.3% GDP growth in 2012 for the euro area, as predicted by the OECD, means its future will be closely linked to that of the UK. The extent to which confidence has been affected can be seen by the third graph, the one behind that there. Um, both consumer and business levels are well below average since 2000 and appear to be falling further. This means demand is very weak and may be influenced heavily by base rate changes. Unemployment also seems to likely to rise over the coming year, not only from Europe but from UK consumer uh, demand, not only from Europe but from UK consumers has slackened and may well continue to fall with the oncoming energy price rises and tax reforms. In particular, manufacturing has been hit hard, with the UK Purchasing Managers Index revised down uh, from October to 47.6 points falling at the fastest rate since 2009. There is pressure, as shown by these statistics, to decrease interest rates, but the committee believes that other factors are subject to significant risks, and so rates should be maintained, that is, confidence, unemployment and future growth. As we know, the inflation level in the UK economy is one of the deciding factors that the committee considers when choosing policy decisions. With the target of 2% and the current level of inflation at 5% as of October this year, there's a great deal of pressure being put on the committee to combat this high rate through raising the official bank rate. However, there are many indicators within the market that point us towards predictions of lower inflation as of next year, and in particular, lower inflation in 2013. These predictions can be clearly seen in the two graphs. The first of these indicators is the contributions to the inflation rate made by VAT. As the graph shows, as of, the, as of next year, the pass-through rate from the greater VAT to inflation will be severely reduced, causing reduced inflation within the economy. Another factor that will cause downward pressure on inflation next year is the energy prices we expect to see within markets. Oil and gas prices are expected to decrease, decrease over the next three years, and this will heavily contribute to the falling level of inflation. This is largely seen from the reduction in futures prices in the market, whereby both oil and gas have fallen by 10% and 7% respectively. As a result of demand currently being very weak within the economy, there is a great deal of slack being seen in labour markets. As a result of this, it is likely to, for there to be depressed growth in wages, thus furthering any force of inflation. This, however, may be counteracted by the current high level of inflation, which is encouraging pressure for higher wages in order to maintain the real wage rate. One of the reasons for the current very high level of inflation is the high price of foreign goods. The committee can, however, now make the reasonable prediction that foreign goods have hit their peak prices. This slowdown in price rises will inevitably have a knock-on effect on inflation, leading it to fall. Not only have the prices reached their peak, but there is also evidence indicating that they will fall in future as the pound appreciates on other currencies.
This will have the effect of making our nation's imports cheaper and therefore low inflation will ensue. In the market, due to the current high level of inflation, there is a great deal of pressure being put on the committee to lower the official bank rate. Uh, raise the official bank rate, sorry. However, due to the reasons stated, it is unwise at this point to raise rates to combat this level of inflation. If the predictions hold true, the inflation will fall quite dramatically in the next two years, and any raises to the bank rate may increase the likelihood of a double dip recession in the UK economy. This is a real risk, and the severity of it as a problem is reflected in the committee's decision to raise the level of quantitative easing to a total of £275 billion. On a final note, the issues I have raised and predictions stated are only valid if the economy continues on its current track. Any major market shocks, up to and including a break of the Eurozone, will more than likely leave these predictions becoming inaccurate. If one were to remove the effect of the increased VAT and the energy price shock, then the UK inflation rate has averaged about 1.5% over the past year. Raising interest rates to offset VAT hikes are counterproductive because VAT itself contracts nominal demand and its price impact on the consumer price index is one time only. Energy prices, as have just been discussed, are volatile and they will rise as soon as they fall. Therefore, setting monetary policy based on these will only destabilise the UK economy and create deep uncertainty about future inflation prospects. It must also be true that with the time lags involved of setting a base rate of interest, that we must aim to hit the target over a two-year period, and hence set an interest rate that we believe will hit the target in two years. Tightening fiscal policy, which the current government is attempting to do, with no offset from additional monetary easing, will only strengthen the underlying deflationary pressures in the economy. Fiscal contraction along with persistent banking failure and insufficiently loose monetary policy generated the negative shock in Japan in 1997 that entrenched deflation and our situation here is not entirely dissimilar. Of course, it has been argued that interest rates do need to be raised in order to prevent a rise in long-term inflation expectations. This view, however, assumes that the markets bet upon headline consumer price index inflation, when the evidence shows that they look over a longer two-year period as to where inflation is expected to be. That is why inflation, long-term inflation predictions remain consistent with the target and why long-term interest rates, which the Monetary Policy Committee cannot control, remain low. The housing market is deeply important to the UK economy. Housing repossessions on the rise once again, with 9,200 occurring in the third quarter of this year. This has come at the same time that the FSA has calculated that 7 out of 10 mortgages are variable rate ones. That is 69% of UK households that are exposed to an increase in the base rate of interest. It has been calculated by which that an average £100,000 20-year variable rate mortgage um, with an increase of just 1% will add £600 a year to the average consumer. That is a great strain on incomes. Now, it has been argued that credibility will be lost if the Bank of England does not raise its base rate to combat this level of inflation. But however, credibility will be lost, not gained, if we raise a base rate. In raising rates now, we will admit that past policy has been inadequate. This at a time when the economic outlook has significantly worsened. It will create questions, why did we not raise them, say in May, when things were markedly better? We as a committee are setting a base rate that we believe is best for the economy, not for the reputation of this bank. We mustn't ignore a significant policy option, and that is the lowering of interest rates. As presented, the committee judges that in 2012 and 2013, the inflation is likely to be below the target but above the target. And considering the time span of the transmission mechanism, this means that lowering interest rates is not a completely invalid policy option. Moreover, the weighted activity index of the Chartered Institute for Purchase and Supply and Market Surveys is at a level that has historically seen the committee lower interest rates. So, why do we feel lowering interest rates is a wrong move? Lowering the bank rate would, have, would not have a negative effect on macroeconomic variables. The use of asset price and exchange rate um, channels could still, mean nominal, could still mean that nominal spending is boosted. A lower level of bank rate would complement our programme of quantitative easing by providing sufficient incentive for banks to find alternative assets to hold rather than uphold um, the additional money in bank deposits. Essentially, the committee recognises that the current bank rate of 0.5% 
is the effective zero lower bound. An interest rate below this will be an effective stimulus to the economy. Lowering interest rates could tighten financial activities as markets have very limited experience with low interest rates. A sustained period of very low interest rates could impair the functioning of money, of money markets and prove difficult in the future when interest rates needed to rise. The committee remained concerned. The committee remained concerned that the further reduction could have some adverse impacts on the economy, given its effects on the profits that banks and building societies were able to make through the spread between their deposit and lending rates. Deposit rates could not be reduced much further, and if these institutions were contractually obliged to pass on cuts to, to um, in the bank of some of their borrowers, their profits would be squeezed and their lending capacity reduced. Recent policy has suggested that unconventional monetary policy is the best option. This includes programs in asset purchasing and monetary easing. To conclude, I would like to, re to present our policy decision to maintain the bank rate at 0.5%. November 2011 was the 17th consecutive inflation report, which the governor has said that the level of GDP will be lower than previously thought in the future. This reflects the severity of the crisis over the last four years. Uncertainty pervades the majority of market activity, and much of that activity stems from events beyond our shores. In, certain, these, in such circumstances, there are limits to what domestic monetary policy can achieve. Increasing the bank rate will send the wrong signals to the market and lead to detrimental economic effects. Lowering the interest rates would not be effective and risk tightening financial activity. The big picture, as we have presented, is that inflation is expected to fall to the 2% target. The best policy option we believe in light of this is maintaining the bank rate at 0.5%. Thank you. Thank you.